This video is sponsored by PageProof. This illustration is called Interlude. It's by Von Glitschka, and he was kind enough to share this illustration. This illustration demonstrates a technique that he uses that I've used myself multiple times. And to deconstruct it, we're going to revisit the Layers panel. What I'd really like to do is mimic some of this texturing that I see. It just makes the art look a little more interesting, a little less flat. How can we deconstruct this to figure out what Vaughn did to create these textures? Let's just show and hide the top texture. Did you see that? It's pretty subtle. So what is this texture? Let's isolate it and see if we can figure that out. Oh, wait a minute. I've isolated the texture. You can see in the layers panel, you can see in the layers panel that it's the only thing showing, but it's nowhere to be found. So why is that? Let's select it and see if we can figure that out. Well, there's a number of things that we can see. If we zoom out, we see a box with an X through it. That indicates a placed image. What type of placed image is this? Well, you've probably already noticed that in the Layers panel, this is a placed image called scornedermis.tiff. So this is an example of the artist, Vaughn, leaving the object name as is in the Layers panel. That doesn't always happen, however. I might rename this Top Texture, in which case you really barely have a clue as to what exactly this is and how it was created. Let's revisit the Appearance panel. The fill appears to be white. What if we change it to one of the other colors in the palette? Aha! You notice I was able to apply a color to this. What if we also change the opacity, just so we can see this better? Okay, now I can see the texture. But again, we don't know exactly what it is. This is where the control bar comes in handy. At the top of the control bar, and if it's not being shown, select Window Control to view it. It shows us that Scorndermis TIFF is a linked file, and it's showing you the path on my computer where this file is stored. But importantly, it also says black and white bitmap, and it tells me what resolution this file is in. 519 by 292, which suggests that Vaughn compressed this file, right? He resized it disproportionately to its original. And that's okay because it still has a pretty high pixel per inch setting. In case you're not aware, a PPI setting of 150 and above is best for anything that you're going to print. So this is a black and white bitmap. What does that mean exactly? It says it's a TIFF file. How can we figure out more information about this? There are a number of options. You have a linked file. And one of the clues that this is a raster image is that Illustrator offers you the option to edit it in Photoshop. Now, we don't have to do that because I'm going to tell you what the secret is to this file. It turns out that black and white and grayscale TIFFs can be colored and have an opacity setting applied to them in Illustrator. I'm going to demonstrate this with another file. 
This is an image that I converted to grayscale in Photoshop and then saved as a TIFF with the default options. So literally two steps. And here again, I can apply a color to it. So that's kind of a magical thing that Illustrator can do is that grayscale and black and white images can be colorized and you can change their opacity. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to give it a like and subscribe to our channel. And for thousands more how-to articles and tutorials, visit our website, creativepro.com, and become a member today. Thanks for learning with us.